Well, hello, I'm Paul Radford, and I'm here with Eve Cooper, a friend, school student, but also one of the composers of this year's Music Count Us In song, which Eve is called... You Won't Bring Us Down. Thank you. Together, we have arranged the song for a small, well, for a marimba ensemble. Uh, it's quite a simple arrangement, but something that maybe upper primary school, lower secondary students could play if indeed you have marimbas and xylophones and the like in your school. We've tried to capture something of the vibe of the song, and because Eve was one of the people who helped write it, I'm going to ask her to tell us a bit more about it. Eve, tell us a bit more about the song. So the song really had a theme of um, standing together, and especially as kids, um, standing together and standing up for what we believe is right and our opinions and beliefs around these issues in our world. So in the Marimba piece we tried to capture the really optimistic and positive vibe and up, it's kind of quite an upbeat song so um, we've really tried to capture that in the arrangement of the piece. That's great and of course marimba ensembles sound best when there is that vibe and um, you've got lots of energy and I know we've had Walt Hampton here a couple of years ago here at the school and one of the things he said is that his music sounds best when it's loud because it's dance music. And we'd like this piece to have that sort of effect too, make, perhaps make people want to dance, certainly feel good about life. So we hope you enjoy the arrangement. You're very welcome to adapt it as you see fit. Um, in the back, um, after the initial score, the back of the arrangement, there are some suggested alterations or variations for some things you might like to do. Um, but of course you can use it however you see fit, changing things that work for your particular situation. And of course if it was me, I'd probably add a drum kit and I might have one or two students on a flute or a saxophone, somebody singing the song, whatever, you can do that too. So what's going to follow are a series of videos that show you how each of the parts sound and that will put them together so you get the overall effect. Eve, thank you very much for helping with this arrangement and thank you too for all that you did to help write the song. I think we're very proud of you as a Tasmanian student that you've been part of this process. Thank so you. congratulations and it's a wonderful song. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs>
that, are, that exist within the bar. Any given bar has a number of notes that ring at the, si at the same time. Now, in most school instruments, those other notes aren't tuned. Um, thankfully, I, th I think I've tuned the harmonics in these particular bars. Nonetheless, if you play down low with a hard mallet, you'll start to bring out some other notes. If they're not in tune, thankfully those are, um, then the, the notes don't sound quite so good. Um, whereas a soft mallet changes the balance of the harmonics, harmonics to the fundamental, resulting in a slightly better sound because you get more of the fundamental. Conversely, up high, the soft mallet just doesn't have enough punch to get the high notes through. You can hear it, but not as well as with this. It's much more attack. So just have a think about mallet choice. Um, generally speaking, softer mallets for down low, harder mallets for up high, unless you want a very particular bright, harsh sound down low. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is how to hold a mallet. Um, our students still need to be reminded of this and they'll grab their mallets and of course you'll turn around and the next thing you'll see is this and we all know, you know that's not the done thing. So we try and teach our students classical marimba mallet technique which means there's a thumb on one side and a finger on the other. Um, you'll see some marimba groups play with thumbs on top. I think that might be more of a timpanist group. We go for a thumb to the side, finger to the side. If you do that you get this sort of um, I call it a roof over your house or a pizza wedge shape um, and it also allows importantly the mallet to bounce. This doesn't of course um, and also for the mallet to bounce the wrists have to be relaxed. Um, and Tracy Patton who will be known to many of you once gave me a great piece of advice. She said that uh, think of an imaginary marimba upside down floating above this one that's actually the instrument you're aiming for. So you bounce up to it. Okay, so just watch out for this and do try and encourage your students to play with thumb to the side, finger to the other side and get that nice wedge shape and get the mallets bouncing like a tennis ball. With the larger instruments like the baritones and basses where you use the much bigger mallet, it's a bit more like a club and then you have to use a bit more forearm, slightly different technique. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is about producing rolls. Now this particular arrangement has a number of rolls. Um, again, I'm going to call on Tracy Patton's advice and sorry that you can't see my face at this point. You just have to hear my voice and see my mallets. What's important about getting a nice roll is not the speed, you've got to think long. And the, again, the hands, wrists have to be relaxed. So it's not about getting as fast as you can, it's about getting a nice, even, long sound. And of course, I should have made this point earlier, here's the best place to get a nice sound. Um, watch out for students who do this. the slower the roll can be on a really big bass instrument or even a baritone down low, if, you, if, the fast, if the roll is fast, you actually tend to cancel the vibrations out. You don't give them time to ring. So they actually sound better, the roll sound better if the um, sticking is slower. Okay, that's how to produce a roll. That's tip number three. Tip number four. This particular arrangement has some accents in it. Uh, as a general rule, and again, sorry you can't see my face at this point, as a general rule, uh, dynamics are a function of velocity with marimba playing. So the faster the mallet, the louder the sound. But that has to be prepared. So here's a little section. I'm going to play it down low. This is variation one um, for marimba one. And we've got this little pattern without accents. Velocity. 
it sound louder if the other notes that are not accented are softer. This is my last tip. In, on the, in the back of the score you'll see a page called Performance Variations. Um, I've suggested a little, it's like a little African rhythmic idiom that pops up in a lot of music that's inspired by Zimbabwean marimba music. And it's sort of this two against three pattern. Um, and you get a lot of it when you have thumb piano music transcribed for marimba. So I'm going to suggest that you maybe use that where you have the G sus2. Presently, uh, and you'll see um, where that occurs in the score. This is again marimba one, but down low. Presently we have this. But it would sound pretty cool if it went like this. syncretic um, motif, if you like, that pops up in a lot of African-inspired marimba music and it's worth including. It's a lot of fun to play. All right, enjoy. There are additional video recordings available which demonstrate each of the parts of this particular arrangement played on actual marimbas. To get to the video recordings, just go to the URL that you see in front of you.